All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Sunday evening services of True Vine Baptist Church. My name is John Howe, and I have been invited by Pastor Gibson to uh, lead the services this evening. Uh, obviously, uh, we are uh, all homebound right now uh, due to the current crisis with the coronavirus and so forth. And so uh, praise the Lord for uh, such wonderful technology uh, that allows us to fellowship, even if in a virtual sense, uh, as far as the body of Christ. And so we're going to start off with some music today. And so uh, I'm going to be uh, using uh, the great hymns of the faith. And so this is a pretty common uh, songbook to many Baptist churches. And so if you have uh, this hymn book, uh, by all means, please uh, uh, break it out. Um, if not, uh, we're going to be singing uh, To God Be the Glory, if you want to look that up in your hymn book, uh, To God Be the Glory. And then uh, also, let's see, we'll be singing I Am Resolved. And so if you want to find that one in your hymn book. And then last of all, uh, faith is the victory. And so to God be the glory, I am resolved, and faith is the victory. Those will be our songs tonight. All right, so uh, we're going to start off with uh, to God be the glory, uh, which in the great hymns of the faith is hymn number 449. Hymn number 449. Uh, let's all get ready to sing. On the first, to God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood. To every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us. Great things he hath done. And great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, it wasn't such good singing on this end. I pray it was better singing uh, on your end. And so... Uh, uh, thanks be to God for uh, a chance to have some uh, some music here. Uh, by the way, there we go. Uh, by the way, just in case you know, there's a, a thing on YouTube called Song Leader's Friend. And uh, this uh, brother, he went through uh, this whole hymn book and recorded every song. And he did that for the purpose for churches who don't have their own piano player. And so you can plug this thing into your sound system, and then you can have some nice piano music to accompany the hymns that you sing so that you don't have to sing a cappella. And so I just found out about that uh, this, this week uh, by listening to Final Fight Bible Radio. And so uh, what a blessing it was uh, to discover that. And so uh, once again, I'd like to welcome you to the Sunday evening services 
of True Vine Baptist Church. Uh, earlier this morning, Brother Byron did a wonderful job teaching us from uh, Matthew chapter 13. Uh, after that, uh, Pastor Gibson, uh, in the morning uh, preaching, uh, discussed uh, uh, the book of Genesis in Genesis chapter 14. And so uh, what a wonderful time of fellowship we've had virtually uh, throughout the day. And thank you so much uh, for tuning in tonight to be a part of what we're going to do this evening. And so uh, at this time, we'll uh, open with a word of prayer, and then we'll have a couple more songs. Amen? Let's pray. Our Father in God, we're grateful today for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And Father, we thank you that through faith in Christ and through repentance, we have salvation through your precious blood. Father, thank you, Lord, for the gift of the church. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the uh, ability to assemble with believers of like faith. And Lord, right now we're not able to do that because of the present crisis uh, with this virus. But Lord, we thank you that virtually through the wonders of the internet and technology that we can still get together. And Lord, it's not the same as seeing each other face to face, but Lord, it's certainly better than nothing at all. And so Father, we just pray for our nation right now. We pray for our world. Uh, we pray for President Donald Trump. Uh, we pray for Vice President Pence as he leads uh, the uh, task force uh, crisis uh, response. We uh, pray for the Surgeon General and for all the doctors that are working with him. Uh, we pray for the various governors of the various states and uh, the uh, elected officials, Lord. And Father, we just pray, O oh God, that, Lord, you would uh, uh, bless them in a special way as far as guiding us and directing us and leading us as far as this current crisis. We just pray that your will be done. We pray that you bless those that are sick and afflicted, that your healing hand might be upon them. Uh, Lord, we pray also that you would bless uh, those that have lost uh, loved ones uh, due to this virus. We pray that you would comfort their hearts. And Father, I pray, God, that you would just uh, uh, bless our health care workers that are working overtime to take care of the sick and injured. Uh, bless our military, the USNS Mercy and the USNS Comfort that are going to Los Angeles and New York City, respectively, to help out with this crisis, Lord. We just pray that you would solve this problem and bring healing to our nation, Lord. And we pray that our nation... Uh, as a whole, might come to a place of repentance towards God and faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for this time. May you please bless the songs we sing. May you bless these prayers that are offered. And Lord, most importantly, may you preach the, or bless the preaching of the Word of God. And Lord, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, our next hymn is going to be hymn number 389. 389. And uh, this hymn uh, is called, I Am Resolved. I am resolved. And so I'll uh, give you just a couple of seconds in case you're using a different hymn book. Uh, maybe you want to Google uh, the lyrics, uh, you know, on, on a computer or a device. Uh, that way you can sing along. But this is uh, I am resolved. And once again, if you're using this hymn book, it's hymn number 389. Here we go on the first. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delights. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have allured my sight. I will hasten to Him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee, I, to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one, he is the just one, he hath the words of life. <clears throat> hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to Thee. I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. Heed what He saith, do what He willeth, He is the living way. I will hasten to Him, Hasten so glad and free, Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. 
I am resolved to enter the kingdom, leaving the paths of sin. Friends may oppose me, foes may beset me, still will I enter in. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved, and who will go with me? Come, friends, without delay. Taught by the Bible, led by the Spirit, will walk the heavenly way. I will hasten to Him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to Thee. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Y'all forgive me. Uh, uh, me and the piano player, we're not on the same time in here. <laughs> so that was a little rough. I apologize. But that's why I'm glad the Bible says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Uh, it doesn't ma matter if it sounds good or not. It just matters if it's joyful. And I don't know about you, but I've got the joy of the Lord in my heart tonight. Uh, Christ died for my sins according to the scriptures. He took my place on Calvary and became my substitute and paid my sin debt and rose again for my justification. And now because of that, I have the hope of eternal life. And so the singing may not be very good, but I promise you that the joy tonight is very real. And so uh, we'll sing one more tonight. Uh, this is going to be hymn number 402 and uh, 402 in this book. And uh, it's uh, Faith is the Victory. And so if you want to look that up in uh, whatever song book you've got, uh, hymn number 402 in this one, uh, Faith is the Victory. Uh, the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, the Bible says that without faith it's impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently uh, seek him. Uh, the Bible says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Amen? And so tonight, let's sing about faith is the victory. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise, and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory, oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. His banner over us is love, our sword, the word of God. We tread the road, the saints above, with shouts of triumph trod. By faith they, like a whirlwind's breath, swept on o'er every field. The faith by which they conquer death is still our shining shield. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. Every hand the foe we find drawn up in dread array. Let tents of ease be left behind, and onward to the fray. Then helmet on each head, with truth all gird about. The earth shall tremble neath our tread, and echo with our shout. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. 
that overcomes the foe. White raiment shall be given before the angels he shall know his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of life, our hearts with love aflame will vanquish all the hosts of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Well, like I said, I hope the singing was better on your end than it was on this end. But uh, I enjoy singing. I, I, I just, I enjoy singing. Uh, I'm not very good at it, uh, but I just enjoy it. Um, I'll never forget when I was a young sailor uh, assigned to the Marines uh, as, a, as a hospital corpsman, um, I was uh, in the shower one day, and uh, I was like uh, sh uh, singing at the top of my lungs. Uh, uh, that old song that goes, Down from His glory, never-ending story, my God and Savior came, and Jesus was His name. Born in a manger, to His own a stranger, a man of sorrows, tears, and agony. Oh, how I love Him! How I adore Him! My breath, my sunshine, my all in all, the great Creator became my Savior, and all God's fullness dwelleth in Him. And after I was done singing that, I came out of the shower, and there was a group of Marines standing there, and they were saying, Hey, Doc, who's this guy you were singing about? <laughs> but praise God, it gave me a chance to tell them who I was singing about. Amen? And so uh, I'm glad that God puts a song in our hearts. All right, well, let's take our Bibles tonight. Let's come to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Um, I was going through uh, an old Bible uh, that I've had for many, many years that's falling apart. And um, this Bible is very precious to me because when my oldest daughter was born, uh, Ashley Denise, uh, right after she was born, um, uh, I took some ink and put it on her uh, feet and I stamped her feet in the back of this Bible. And so uh, this Bible is, I don't know, probably close to 30 years old. Uh, Ashley's like 25 now. And so uh, I've had it for a long time. Well, it's falling apart. And so I was going through this Bible, and I, I just sent it off to uh, Norris Bookbinding in Greenwood, Mississippi, uh, to have it rebound, because certainly it has a lot of sentimental value uh, since it's got my daughter's footprints in it. Uh, but as I was going through this Bible, I came across this sermon. And I'll be honest with you, I'd forgotten that I'd preached this. And uh, I preached this uh, many years ago when I was the pastor of uh, Truth Baptist Church in Yuma, Arizona. And uh, this was a sermon outline that just really kind of leaped off the page at me as I was going through this old Bible. And so I decided that uh, with the help of the Lord tonight, uh, I'd like to preach on this subject, Five Roadblocks to Hell. Five Roadblocks to Hell. You know, uh, have you ever been at, at Walmart or at some strip mall, and as you're driving through the parking lot, it seems like every 10 feet there's a speed bump. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I get very annoyed with those speed bumps. But I understand why they're there. They're there for safety. Uh, they're there so that you don't fly through that parking lot. And if some poor woman and her small children are coming out of a store trying to go back out to their car, that you don't fly through that parking lot and run over them. Or that elderly person that's trying to get out of their handicapped spot and, and you fly through that parking lot and you run over them. And so that speed bump... Uh, is placed there. It's meant to slow you down. It's meant to provide safety to avoid disaster. And I want to say unto you tonight that the biggest disaster that could ever happen to any of us is to die lost, to leave this world in our sins, and go off to a place called hell. Uh, the Bible tells us that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 
God wants everyone to be saved. And to help us understand what it takes to be saved, God has placed some speed bumps in the road. Uh, he's placed some safety measures to prevent you and I from going off into disaster, into a Christless eternity. And so in Hebrews chapter 10, we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. Now in Hebrews chapter 10, uh, notice what it says, uh, verse uh, 22. Uh, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Woo, doggy! Let's repeat that again. He is faithful that promised. Uh, I'm glad tonight that I've got a God that cannot lie. Uh, I've got a God that doesn't go back on his promises. I've got a God that he says that if he's going to do something, he'll do it. I'm thankful tonight that that Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And God is going to honor that promise because faithful is he that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Oh, let me read that again. Uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Oh, let me read that again. Uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. I'm glad that God has given us the command to assemble ourselves as the body of Christ. The ecclesia, the called out of assembly. Uh, we're supposed to come out of this world and come together in Jesus' name and have fellowship. Uh, listen, I realize that right now in most states, uh, everything's shut down as far as stores and malls and, and certainly churches and so forth. And we are compelled and constrained to fellowship virtually and so forth. Uh, but I'm telling you, there's coming a time where we got to come out of these houses again. Uh, we got to come out of this world. We got to get back to the house of God. And we got to fellowship and assemble together as the body of Christ. Now listen, uh, I know it's not a building. I'm not talking about a church building as far as uh, brick and mortar and sheetrock and paint and all that stuff. Uh, listen here, uh, the church can meet in the park at a bench for all I'm concerned. Uh, listen here, what I'm talking about is the body of Christ getting together and not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Uh, let me tell you, before this coronavirus ever came up, people were already already looking for an excuse to get out of church. I'm telling you tonight, we better stop looking for excuses to get out of church and we better start looking for excuses to get into church. Uh, listen, before coronavirus uh, ever showed up, some of you had stopped assembling yourselves together. Before coronavirus ever reared its ugly head and quarantines and two-week stand-downs and all that stuff, came up. Some of y'all had forsaken the assembling of yourselves together. And I want to say tonight, let's get right with God. Uh, let's uh, re-energize and get some revival in our hearts and look for excuses to get back in church instead of getting out of church. Amen. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching, as ye see the day approaching. Now understand, every verse of Scripture, every verse of Scripture has three applications. Number one, there's a historical application as far as uh, the fact of history. Uh, number two, it has a doctrinal application as far as its primary teaching. And then number three, it has a spiritual application as far as how we can apply things devotionally. Now, uh, we are in the book of Hebrews. Now, of course, the book of Hebrews, it's not written to the church. It's not written to the church. It's written to the Hebrews. So from a doctrinal standpoint, there's no doubt that the day that is approaching as far as this context has to do with the second advent of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ physically and literally and visibly coming back to this earth and setting his feet on the Mount of Olives and reigning over this earth as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There's no doubt that's the primary doctrinal application to the Hebrews. But nevertheless, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. 
and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And so tonight we can certainly apply this thing spiritually and devotionally to ourselves as the body of Christ as far as assembling ourselves together and so much the more as we see the day, the rapture of the church, approaching. And so there's nothing wrong with making that spiritual application so long as you understand that the primary doctrinal application is dealing with a Jew in the tribulation, a Hebrew who's being persecuted by the Antichrist, who's looking for the coming of Messiah to deliver Israel. As long as you understand that primary doctrinal application, you'll be good to go. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy uh, under two or three witnesses. Of how much more, so, or how much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit, the spirit of grace? For ye know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth Unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Now, doctrinally, this is Israel in the tribulation being persecuted uh, by the Antichrist and the temptation to fall away and to turn away from God and to just take the mark of the beast and give in. The temptation is very strong. And so Paul, I believe it's Paul writing this. Uh, Paul's encouraging these believers that are in this time of tribulation not to fall away, but to stay faithful to the end. For later in the chapter, he's going to say, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. But I want to take these passages tonight, if I could, for a few moments and make a devotional application as far as the five roadblocks that God has placed in your way. Uh, the five roadblocks that God has placed in my way that if we'll pay attention to these roadblocks, it will keep us from going to hell. Now, if you're saved tonight, uh, you're saved. Uh, you're already on your way to heaven. Uh, there's nothing that can happen to you that will take you to hell if you are saved and born again and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and filled with the Spirit and sealed by the Spirit to the day of redemption. There's nothing that can cause you to not be a Christian. But if you happen to be out there watching tonight and you're playing religion and you've never truly been born again, uh, you've never been under Holy Ghost conviction and ever been converted to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me say something to you. You better pay close attention to the things that I'm going to say to you tonight. In verse number 28, he says, He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Uh, I want to say this first of all. The first roadblock that God has placed in your way to keep you from going to hell is the roadblock of the Holy Scriptures. The roadblock of the Holy Scriptures. Uh, listen here. God has given you a book. The Bible says that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Uh, the Bible says that holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says to seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Uh, the Bible says to search the scriptures, for in them ye think that ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Uh, the Bible says to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. God gave you a book. What have you done with it? What have you done with it? God inspired the scriptures in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Hebrew and Aramaic for the Old Testament, Greek for the New Testament. There's probably not three of you out there that know any of those languages. 
I, I've never studied Hebrew or Aramaic. I've had three years of Greek. So I know a little Greek. I know no Hebrew or Aramaic. Don't know any of that. But you know what? God didn't just inspire it in those languages. He preserved it. And he's given it to me right here in English, in the language I was born in, that I can understand. And you know what? I can get in this book, and I can read it, and I can meditate in it. Uh, I can memorize it. Uh, listen here. Uh, I can share it with other people. And by the grace of God, I can do what I can to try and live it. What have you done with this book? God gave you a book! What have you done with this book? The Bible tells us in Psalm 19, verse 7. Psalm 19, verse 7, if you'll turn there. Psalm 19, 7. Psalm 19, 7. You know, I'm sorry if I get a little too excited for you. I don't care if I'm in this room by myself or not. I came to preach tonight, amen? Uh, I, I preach like this if the auditorium's full. Uh, I preach like this if the auditorium's empty. And I preach like this in my own office when there ain't nobody in here but me and God, amen? Psalm 19, 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. You know, someone made a song out of these passages. You know me, I like to sing. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, is thy servant warned. And in keeping of them there is great reward. Oh, let me tell you something. Uh, I love this book. This book is what brought salvation to my heart, my soul, and my mind, and there's nothing you'll ever do to take my book away from me. The first roadblock to hell, the scriptures. Uh, now you're clean through the word that I've spoken unto you. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed thereto according uh, to thy word? Uh, uh, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Thank God tonight for the roadblock of the scriptures. The roadblock of the scriptures has been placed before you to keep you out of hell, my friend. Number two, I want to say this. In verse 29, of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God. The Son of God. Uh, listen, not only has God given the scriptures as a roadblock, but most importantly, he's given you his Son as a roadblock. And the scriptures 
testify of his son. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. O oh, my friend, he that hath the Son hath life and he that hath not the Son hath hath not life. It really isn't any more complicated than that. You know, people say that this Bible is hard to understand, especially this old King James Bible. Oh, I can't understand all those these and thous. And when it says cometh and turneth and goeth, oh, I just don't know what to do. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. All one syllable words. You understand it just fine, sir. You understand it just fine, ma'am. The problem is you just don't want to obey it. <laughs> you just don't want to do it. You don't want to do what God said. You don't want to honor the Son of God. Uh, listen, uh, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And Jesus said, He that hates me hates my Father also. God gave you His Son. Christ became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God for Him. God sent His Son into this world as the perfect substitute to die in your place and to be raised again for your justification. If you go to hell, you'll go over the roadblock of the Son of God. Number three, let me say this. Not only the Scriptures and not only the Son, but thirdly, the sacrifice of the Son. The sacrifice of the Son. You see, the Scriptures are one roadblock. The Son of God Himself is in one uh, roadblock. But now we have the sacrifice that the Son made. That in itself is a roadblock. You know, the Gospel, as I said earlier, is how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You know, He shed His blood to make atonement for your sins and for mine. The Bible says, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. The Bible says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The Bible says, When I see the blood, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Does the blood cover your sins tonight, my friend? You see, there's a lot of folks, maybe even some of you, you've been playing religion your whole life. You go to church, uh, you sing in the choir, you teach Sunday school, uh, maybe you're a deacon, uh, you give money as far as tithes and offerings, uh, you go through all the religious motions as far as outward expression of religion, but on the inside you're full of dead men's bones. You've never been born again. You've never had the peace that passes all understanding. Even tonight, you don't have the assurance that heaven is your home. Oh, I beg you tonight, friends, stop playing religion. Stop playing religion. Uh, understand that salvation uh, is not religion. Salvation is a relationship. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one way to heaven, and it's Jesus Christ. And the sacrifice that he made for you on the cross, the Bible says that he bore in his body our sins on the tree. He became a curse for us. Uh, listen here. Uh, by his stripes, we are healed. You see, God gave you the scriptures. God gave you his son. But God also gave you that sacrifice. And those are three roadblocks that will keep you out of hell. 
Uh, listen, uh, you can either speed through the parking lot and just blast through those roadblocks, or you can let the roadblocks do what they're intended to do, to slow you down, to prevent you from catastrophe. Slow you down to prevent you from catastrophe. Number four, I want to say this. Not only the scriptures, not only the son, not only the sacrifice, but number four, the Holy Spirit himself, the spirit of truth. If you would, take your Bibles and come over to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Jesus had this to say about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. John chapter 16. Come, if you will, to verse number 7. John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now, the word comforter there, that's the paraclete. The paraclete. And the paraclete, that same word that you find right here, in 1 John chapter 2, it's translated as advocate. So, the Holy Spirit, he is our paraclete. He is our comforter, the one who comforts us. But he's also our advocate, uh, that defense attorney that stands up for us. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. That word reprove means to prove wrong, to hold accountable. He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. So the scriptures are truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the Son, he is the truth. But notice the Spirit here, verse 13. Howbeit when the Spirit of truth is come, the Spirit is he also is truth. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Notice it says, he will not speak of himself. If you go to a charismatic or a Pentecostal church and all they ever do uh, is talk about the Holy Ghost, uh, you get out of there, that's a place filled with demons and unclean spirits. You know how you know that? Because a congregation, a preacher, and a church that's filled with the Holy Spirit, they won't talk about the Holy Spirit. They'll talk about Jesus Christ. And if you're in a place where all they talk about is the Holy Spirit, you, my friend, are in the wrong place. That's right. I don't say that to hurt you. I say that to help you. And so the Holy Spirit, he's going to reprove the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Do we have an example of this happening in Scripture? Why, yes, we do. Acts chapter 24. Acts chapter 24. And Acts chapter 24, look at this. Acts chapter 24. Now this is uh, speaking of Festus. Oh, I'm sorry, Felix. Speaking of Felix. And when, uh, Acts chapter 24, verse 22. And when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and said, When Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I will know the uttermost of your matter. And he commanded a centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty, and that he should forbid none of his acquaintances to minister or come unto him. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, and he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, 
temperance, and judgment to come. Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. You know, you can read this Bible from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation. You'll never find a time where it's recorded that a more convenient season came for Felix. As far as I know, Felix died lost without Jesus Christ. And even as I preach this message to you tonight, he's in a devil's hell. A convenient season never came. You know what? Tonight, you may be sitting there listening to this message. And the Spirit of God might be all over you, reproving you of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. And as you sit there and the Holy Ghost of God is bringing conviction on your heart, maybe you're just like old Felix there, thinking to yourself, I can do this later. I, I want a more convenient season. You know, I think of my son, Josh, who's a Marine. And Josh said he was going to tune in on the broadcast tonight. And I, I think maybe a couple of his Marine buddies were going to tune in with him. And I don't know if they did or not. But if they did, and even if they didn't, this is for somebody else out there I know. Um, you know what the devil's going to do to you, my friend? The devil is going to lie to you and take one day at a time from you until you have no days left. You understand that, right? He's a liar and the father of it. There's no truth in him. He's a murderer from the beginning. Listen here. The devil makes you think you've got tomorrow. The Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. The Bible says, What is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Uh, you don't have the guarantee of tomorrow. You don't have the guarantee of your next heartbeat. You don't have the guarantee of your next breath. But the devil makes you think that you can do it tomorrow. The devil does with you like he did with Pharaoh. Pharaoh wanted one more night with the frogs to see if he could figure it out for himself as far as how to do things his way instead of the way that God said to do it through Moses. Some of y'all are just like Pharaoh. You'd rather have one night with the frogs, one more night with the frogs, than to get right with God. But you know what? God gave you that fourth spiritual roadblock. He gave you that fourth spiritual speed bump. He gave you the Holy Spirit. Right now as I speak to you, the Holy Spirit is pricking your conscience about sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. God is calling you to salvation. What will you do with it? But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe! Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Oh, my friend, harden not your heart, but repent and believe the gospel that your sins may be blotted out. Number five, let me give you the final point. And thank you for sticking with me this long. If you haven't tuned out yet, you might as well stick around to the bitter end. Amen? <laughs> Number five and finally. Not only has God placed the spiritual roadblock of the scriptures, the son, the sacrifice, and the spirit. But number five, the saints themselves. The saints. Notice if you will please, Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. In Matthew chapter 28, here's what Jesus did for his disciples. Matthew chapter 28. In Matthew chapter 28, the Bible says this, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, 
teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. You know what we call that? We call that the Great Commission. And the Great Commission ought to be the great concern of every Christian. Look at Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Let me speak to you believers for a minute. Mark chapter 16. In verse 15, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Notice being damned wasn't based on baptism. It was based on not believing. Baptism has nothing to do with salvation. Baptism is an emblem of salvation. It has nothing to do with salvation itself. We are saved by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. If you look at Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, and Acts chapter 1, Jesus said this in verse number 8, Acts 1, 8. He said, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. You say, well, that was written to the apostles. Yes, it was. But it's also for us. You know how you know? The apostles never made it to the uttermost part of the earth. But you and I have in our generation because of technology. The world's become a much smaller place than what it was during the times of the apostles. And so we are his witnesses. The Great Commission ought to be our great concern. Listen here. The Bible says the church, which is not a building, the church is the people. But the church is the pillar and ground of the truth. People ought to be able to come to church to get around God's people and get the truth. Why? We're his witnesses. Let me give you one more. Come over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I want you to notice this, verse 18, 2 Corinthians 5, 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now watch this. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he, hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Five roadblocks to hell. You know, ACDC, those bunch of heathen, pagan, heavy metal heads that I used to listen to in high school in full disclosure, they used to sing a song called Highway to Hell. I wonder how many of y'all remember that song. Highway to Hell. And you know what? Jesus said, broad is the way that leads unto destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. You see, most people are on that highway to hell that ACDC spoke about. Uh, many are called, but few are chosen. So as people are on that highway to hell, you know what God did? He put a road bump there. <laughs> it's called the King James Bible. He put that road bump right there in your way. And if you go over that one, he put a second roadblock his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And if you keep flying down that highway to hell, he'll give you a third roadblock, the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. And if you go over that speed bump, if you go past that roadblock, then he'll give you the Holy Spirit, which is going to convict you and reprove you of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. And if you go past that one, last of all, he's got the saints, the church of the living God. You see, we are commissioned by God to be ambassadors for God. Let me say that again. We are commissioned by God to be ambassadors for God. And so if you know Christ tonight, if you've been born again and washed in the blood of the Lamb, sealed by the Spirit of God to the day of redemption, you're His witness. You're His ambassador. You are commissioned by Him to be His ambassador. Do you know an ambassador doesn't represent their own interests? An ambassador represents the interests of the one who sent him. Uh, I'm not here to represent John Howe as far as my likes and dislikes, my opinions, my politics, or anything of the kind. I'm here as an ambassador to represent Jesus Christ. And if you're saved, you're his ambassador too. And so my prayer for you Christians this week is that this message might motivate you and inspire you to be salt to make people thirsty for Jesus Christ and to make you light, to shine light in their darkness that you might draw them to the greatest light of all, the Lord Jesus Christ, the light of the world, the sun of righteousness, the day star from on high, the King of kings and Lord of lords. But if you're not saved, I beg you, I beg you with every fiber of my being to repent towards God and have faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. If you receive him, he will receive you. But if you reject him, if you reject the five roadblocks that he's put in your way, then a holy, righteous, and just God has no choice but to let you go off into eternity into a lake of fire where the smoke of your torment will ascend up forever and ever. Oh, now. Now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Let's pray. Our Father in God, Thank you, Lord, so much for your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. That he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us a book, an infallible, inerrant, inspired record about your Son so that we could know the way of salvation. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us this book. Thank you, Lord, for the Spirit of God that bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and reproves the lost of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. Thank you, Lord, that we are born again by this book and by the power of your Spirit. And Lord, I just pray tonight for anyone that's within the sound of my voice, whether they're listening live right now or whether they might watch this message later on on YouTube or some other way. Lord, I just pray that the words of God will not fall on deaf ears. Oh God, save that soul that's closest to hell tonight, oh God. Bring them to faith and repentance in you tonight. And Lord, may the heart of every Christian be motiva motivated to go out this week and tell the old, old story. And Father, May you bring forth much fruit. And Lord God, we'll thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. Father, please continue to guide us and protect us through this crisis. Give our elected officials wisdom as far as what we need to do. Give our church leaders wisdom as far as what the church needs to do. And Lord, we just pray that together, collectively, as the body of Christ, we can bring honor and glory to your name. 
For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On behalf of Pastor David Gibson um, and the folks of True Vine Baptist Church, um, I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, I pray that the Word of God has been a blessing to you, and I pray that you've been encouraged. And uh, if you have any questions uh, whatsoever, uh, please feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, as I get the opportunity, I will very surely, assuredly uh, go through and answer any questions. Uh, if someone needs help with regards to salvation or counseling along those lines, please send me a, a, an instant message to John David Howe on Facebook, and I'll be happy to chat with you and try to help you. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in. May the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you until we meet again, my dearly beloved. Amen.